Okay, okay, guys. Good morning. This is the continuation of your module. Another supplemental video with regards to the law of supply and demand, prices, demands, and impacts to, uh, to the consumers. Okay, This is just a continuation from what I have sent you the previous time. And basically, after this, I'm going to send a new module na sa inyo. Okay? And then again, if you have questions, you can just ask that and message it on our GC. You can all, ha, doon na lang kayo sa GC mag-message. Huwag niyo na akong ipi. <laughs> Dumadami eh. Dumadami ka usap ko. So if it is uh, related to the subject or it concerns the class, let us just talk about it on our GCs, okay? So again, if meron kayong mga kaklase who has no access to the internet or walang data, um, just do the honor of downloading it and then sharing it offline to your classmates so they can uh, they will still be able to access the supplemental lectures regardless if they are uh, offline. Okay, magmalasakit sa mga ano to, kaklase. So let's start. Um, you have your first activity. Ayaw lumipat. Ayan. So your first activity is you need to compare this one. Buyers and sellers daw plays a significant role in the market. And basically, they are the ones who actually uh, dictates if an institution is going, going to survive or not. Diba? It is important din daw to learn the ideas. Ideas yan, hindi yan ides. The ideas on how prices goes up, goes down, and destabilizes. So, how uh, how are you going to understand that? Please compare these two. So, a corn, a sack of corn costing two thousand pesos versus a cost of rice, which co a sack of rice with uh, which costs two thousand four hundred. Okay. So, if you are the buyer. Ano bibilhin mo? A sack of corn or a sack of rice? Remember that there is a 400 pesos difference between the cost of these two. Okay? Now, you might be saying, Sir, yung, uh, ano na lang po, yung sack of corn kasi 2,000 lang. Pero yung 400, pwede ko siyang maipambili ng ilang. Okay? That's, that's actually fine. That is your answer. Kasabihin naman ng iba, Sir, yung rice pa din. Kahit mas mahal siya ng 400, dyan po kami sa 9. Diba? Kasi yung iba, um, their buying, ano to, their buying decision is dependent on their preference. Hindi porque, hindi lahat ng mura binibili kasi hindi lahat ng mura gusto. Diba? So, hindi lahat ng cheap gusto. Okay? Sometimes, people goes to a better quality and to a product that will uh, satisfy kung ano yung talagang gusto nila makuha coming from that product. Okay? So whatever your decision is, whatever your answer is, there, it doesn't matter as long as you justify your answer. Okay? Next, let's move on to the buying behavior of Filipinos. So ano-ano daw yung mga nakaka-apekto sa pagdidesisyon? ng mga Pilipino in buying something. So, number one is the preference. Ano yung gusto? ba? Like, you have there as variety of television. ba? So, each television basically offers an almost the same function. ba? Pwedeng kabitan ng ganito, pwedeng kabitan ng ganon, pwedeng lagyan ng internet, pwedeng lagyan ng mga uh, kung ano-ano. Uh, and you can play with it, etc. Halos pare-pareho. But it differs in brand. Some people would go for kapareho lang naman na features na mas mura. And some would go doon sa nakanasa, nakasanayan ng mas mahal kasi uh, sa tingin nila, pag mas mahal yan, mas matibay. So that is the preference of people. Diba? Like for example, yung mga boys. Kayo yung mga boys. Diba? What is your preference? Preference over girls. Diba? Yung iba gusto mahaba buho. Pare-pareho lang naman babae, pero mas gusto nila mahaba buho. Yung mga mahahabang buhok naman, gusto nila yung iba naka-highlight, yung iba uh, nakaayos sa uh, kung ano, but still mahaba ang buhok. That is a preference, di ba? Okay, going back, is, uh, but the buying behavior din daw also is dependent with regards to the behavior and brand loyalty. 
'di ba? Like for example, say TV tayo. Balik tayo kay TV. Bawal gamitin yung ating mga ano to, yung mga example sa classroom, okay? Baka may screenshot tayo. <laughs> TV. <clears throat> so, behavior um ako No, 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 not, not, not just me. For example, ako, mas gusto ko yung flat screen. Okay? That is a behavior. Although, pwede naman ako yung merong uh, outback pa, di ba? Pwede naman yun. Sing lang ang um, purpose nun. Yung iba naman, gusto nila, hindi lang siya basta flat screen, gusto nila smart TV or Android TV na din. Di ba? Bak bakit? Kasi, They can make use of their ano to of their applications na ginagamit sa cellphones sa TV, di ba? And they can maximize the use of their internet if they do have a smart TV or an Android TV, di ba? And another thing is hindi lang ako bibili ng basta TV, basta smart TV or basta Android TV. Mas gusto ko dapat branded siya. At gusto ko hindi lang ako bibili ng kung anong brand. Gusto ko dapat gawayan ng Sony, gawayan ng kung ano na kilala na sa market. That is brand loyalty. Okay? And next is buying behavior daw is also affected by advertising. Eh kasi si Liza Soberano ang uh, nag-endorse kaya bibilhin ko yan. Baka maging kamukha kayo ni Liza Soberano kapag binili niyo yan. Di ba? Baka maging kasing ganda ng buhok ni Catherine Bernardo yung isang shampoo ba yun o sabon na ini-endorse niya If you buy that, di ba? Brand uh, advertising. Actually, it affects uh, yung ating buying behavior kung sino nag endorse Mas reliable yan. Mas binibili yan ng mga uh, tao. Okay? And then, of course, the value for money. When we talk about value for money, we are basically uh, referring, uh, referring, <laughs> referring, referring doon sa saan mas marami kang mabibili. That is one, value for money. Halimbawa, uh, bibili ako ng bigas, there are variety of bigas there, and the pinakamahal is 60 pesos. Pwede ba yung, imbis na bumili ako ng dalawang kilong uh, 60 pesos ng bigas, pwede ba yung, dalaw ay, no, 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 sorry, Imbis na bumili ako ng isang kilong 60 pesos na bigas, pwede bang dalawang kilo ng 30 pesos na bigas na lang ang bilhin ko? Because I'm, I wanted to get a value of my money. That is one. Another thing is, kung bibili ako ng 10,000 na TV, why not bumili na lang ako ng 35,000 na alam kong mas mataas ang kalidad, mas tatagal. Baka kasi si 10,000 after 2 or 3 years, si Rana. Whereas, kung si 35,000 ang bibiling ko, baka abutan pa yan ng mga apo ko. That is going for the value of your money. That is one buying behavior of the Philippines. Okay? Next, basic versus prime commodity. So, basic, uh, we all, ang ating ano to, buying behavior is always influenced by uh, our needs and our wants. Di ba? So, like for example, what are our basic needs, right? Uh, firewood, charcoal, may gumagamit pa ba sa inyo? Cooking oil, salt, uh, the basic needs. So, ibig sabihin, we always try to prioritize our basic needs in buying, in making a decision to buy something or to spend our hard-earned money. Okay? Nagigets yun, di ba? So, kailangan unahin natin si basic needs. Now, The thing is, kailan papasok na pwede namang bumili ng ating mga uh, ones like cellphone, cars, tablets, and laptops. That is number one, kung meron uh, sobra. Number two, kung meron pa namang pagkukuhanan na resources. And number three, ready ka ba? Huwag muna tayong kumain ng tatlong araw para makabili tayo ng cellphone. Huwag muna natin bilhan ng dede yung ating anak para bili muna tayo ng cars. Are you ready? Kasi if lim masyado limited ang resources mo, ibig sabihin, you need to sacrifice something from your basic needs to be able to afford the wants or your desire. ba? Diba? Otherwise, hindi mo talaga kasayanan yan. Okay? But then again, 
bilang mabubuting tao, hindi natin inuuna kung ano yung ating gusto. Lagi natin inuuna ano ang kailangan natin, hindi lang natin, kundi yung kailangan ng mismong pamilya natin. So wag kayong magtatampo uh, sa mga magulang niyo, hindi kayo mabilhan ng cellphone, inuuna yung inyong survival for this time of pan uh, pandemic. Otherwise, o sige, wag kayo kumain, bilhin tayo ng cellphone. Di ba? Gusto niyo ba 'yon? Okay. Next, moving on. What is a market structure? It describes the state of a market with regards to competition or the actual settings of the market. So in economics, A market structure is a situation or, uh, of a competition in an actual settings of the market. So, ibig sabihin, market structure basically tells what kind of uh, exchange is happening in a specific uh, time and place that a specific or a variety of product is sold. That is a market structure. Kasi hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon, pare-pareho ng sistema ang ating mga market structure. Next. Rivalry, uh, competition daw is a rivalry among many sellers in a particular market selling almost the same or exactly the same goods. Diba? So, mamimili na lang si buyer who among these competitors ang gusto niyang uh, bilhan. So, basically, ang mga ano dyan, ang mga considerations sino yung may mabait, maayos ang pakikitungo, magaling mag-entertain. At the same time, mas may magandang may offer Kahit na ang uh, basic products is pare-pareho lang naman. Okay? So market has, impressed com has impersonal competition among sellers who compete to sell their goods and services among purchasers who use their purchasing power to acquire the availability of the product. Okay? So Market daw has an impersonal competition. Impersonal meaning, hindi natin kailangan magpatayan, but we are competing against the attention of our customers. Diba? Bakit? Kasi the more we are able to attract our customers to buy in us, the more that it assures sustainability of our business. Diba? Kasi kung hindi, um, hindi ka natatagal din dyan, and then you might as well find a new way of sourcing out for an income, di ba? Okay, so these are the classification of the market or the market form. So you have there, according to form of market structure, according to number of firms, nature of product, price elasticity of demand, degree of control over price. So pag isa-isahin natin yan. So, perfect competition daw, it has a very large number of firms. Marami ang nagtitinda, marami ang nag-o-offer ng product. Okay, but sa perfect competition, it, the nature of product is homogeneous. Ibig sabihin, uh, iisa lamang ang ating produktong ina-offer, ano ino okay? ibinibenta sa ating customers. Okay? That is why it is a homogeneous product. So price elasticity of price el wait, wait. <laughs> price elasticity of ano to, demand so infinite. Ibig sabihin as long as you are able to offer something people will come and people get attracted your business is going to be sustainable and it's going to thrive regardless of the market condition. So then again, what is the degree of control over price? Wala. Wala silang control over price because it will always be demanded doon sa factors like the demand, uh, prices of raw materials, and other factors that may affect the production of the products they are selling. Okay, So that is for perfect competition. Next. Uh, monopolistic competition. So, there is a large number of firms. Okay? Marami ang nagtitinda. Bakit yan monopolistic? They have a differentiated product. Marami ang nagtitinda. Iba-iba naman ang itinitinda nilang <coughs> produkto. Okay? So, ang price elasticity niyan very large because of the varying and differentiated products. Um, people or the customers may actually choose 
who to prioritize, uh, to patronize, and sino ang hindi. Okay, so ano yung degree ng control nila over sa prices? Meron silang control over the prices, pero hindi ganoon ka uh, laki yung kanilang ano to, control sa presyo. Ganito kasi yan. Meron tayong tinatawag na price floor, floor and price ceiling sa pricing. Di ba? I think na-discuss ko na yan sa ating ano to, uh, marketing. Okay? Pag sinabi natin uh, price floor, ibig sabihin, eto yung pinakamababang uh, presyo na pwede nating ilagay doon sa ating produkto. Bakit may mga gumagamit ng price flooring? Kasi gusto nilang makabenta ng mas marami. Pag mas, mas, uh, mas mura, di ba? Sabi natin kanina, mas marami ang bumibili. Now, ano naman yung price ceiling? Pag sinabi natin price ceiling, eto yung pinakamataas na presyo na pwede natin itakda sa isang produkto. Like for example, we are selling a cell phone, di ba? With this specific kind of features. Ang pwede natin pinakamababang i-benta dyan, ah, i-pressure dyan is 5,000. Ang pinakamataas sabihin natin is 15,000. Now, if someone goes beyond the ceiling and the floor, pwede na silang kasuhan ng gobyerno kasi they are already sabotaging the economic activities. Di ba? Bakit? Hindi na yan monopolistic competition. Monopoly na yan. Di ba? Uh, uh, yes, bakit? Kasi they are already dictating kung ano yung presyo at the same time, ano ang purpose para sila, sa kanila lang bibili yung mga tao. And that is prohibited by the law. Okay? And then, punta tayo sa pure oligopoly. So, there are a few uh, firms or oligopoly lang. There are a few firms, so konti lang daw ang nagtitinda. There, uh, there is a homogeneous product. Iisa lang klaseng produkto ang ibinibenta. Prices elasticity, hindi. Wala masyadong maliit kasi sila ang nagtatakda ng presyo. Yung control nila over price, uh, they do have, ano to? Yung degree of control over price, they do have some uh, freedom with regards to ano to uh, assigning prices for their products but basically they dictate the products yung sum na sinasabi lang dyan is the limitation imposed by the government okay while in monopoly there is only one firms and there is a unique product sila lang ang meron yung price elasticity wala sila nagdidikta niyan and then yung degree of control, very large kasi sabi nga natin sila ang nagdidikta ng presyo na gusto nilang ilagay sa kanilang ano to, uh, produkto. It's just a matter of take it or leave it. Usually kasi tao will take it kasi kailangan nila yung produkto. Wala naman ibang nag-offer niyan. Okay? That is for market forms or classifications of market. Okay. So, in your activities, you need to cut out a paste or paste pictures that describe each market form. You can use ones that are available on the internet and then you have to explain bakit sa tingin nyo that is an example of an oligopoly, of a perfect competition, etc. Okay? No need to print or whatever. Okay? And then next activity would be a situational analysis. You can formulate or create a situation in which you can easily connect the market forms you've learned from this module and explain why. So, ang example dyan, like for example, um, you are referring to oligopoly. There is a sugar milling company in Bukudnon. Uh, it belongs to oligopoly because the, uh, they only have two sugar milling company that operate uh, operates in producing sugar to for the consumption of the people. So that is oligopoly. Bakit kasi uh, the consumption, the sugar consumption of these people are only produced by two milling companies, and basically these two milling companies sila lang yung nagbibigay at nagtatakda rin ng presyo kung magkano nila gusto ibenta yung kanilang produkto. Otherwise, if you don't want the price, wag ka bibili, wag ka magasuka. Ganun lang yan, di ba, sa oligopoly. Or, uh, yung mga ano natin, yung ating mga 
Actually hindi na pwede, hindi na natin pwedeng sabihin na sa oligopoly yung ano eh, yung oil industry sa Pilipinas kasi there are small players that have been allowed to operate and basically the competition has gone ano to has gone better na nagko-compete na sila ngayon doon sa prices and people just need to decide kanino sila bibili with regards to oil supplies na kailangan nila but in your case you need to identify uh, one for each para ididikit ay no no you are going to explain bakit yun ang napili ninyo doon sa inyong mga answer sheet okay next activity would be a survey uh, survey in the market and list down at least 10 famous famous firms then get uh, <laughs> then get vital information about their business and fill in a table so ano yung table na kailangan niyo i-fill out so forms of market structure ano ba yan perfect competition oligopoly wala wala and then and reason for such bakit sila perfect competition bakit niya sabi now the thing is um may limitation sa paglabas ninyo di ba so I would suggest that you use the internet na lang. Or, or if you know the businesses naman dito sa Teresa, Antipolo, and uh, Moron, yun na lang yung gamitin ninyo. Wag na kayong to really do the survey, di ba? So yun lang, yung comparison na lang ang gawin ninyo para hindi nyo kailangan lumabas. Even at home, you can do this activity. So moving on to the next topic is the effects on of contemporary issues on economics. So you have there in your module a scrum world word. So you should be forming migration, unemployment, exchange rate, peace and order, oil price increase. Okay, so let us try to know about these things. So una, uh, ano hin muna natin? Pag-usapan muna natin what is a purchasing power. So purchasing power daw is the equivalent rate of currency expressed in terms of the value of goods or services that a unit of money can buy. So pag sinabi natin purchasing power, we are basically repairing to the ability of one household or an individual to buy something. Okay? So like for example, sumusweldo ako ng 50,000 what are the things that I can buy from 50,000? That is my purchasing power. Now, someone else, example lang yun, ha? Someone else is a misweldo ng 10,000 a month, yun yung kanyang purchasing power, di ba? Kung ano yung fresh uh, halaga ng pera na mayroon ka para ibili ng kung ano mang produkto, that is your purchasing power, okay? So, next. Uh, migration is moving from one place to another for different purposes. We're going to know about it later. And then economic migration daw forms a large part of the reason why people migrate. So discretions to transfer can be influenced by high poverty, matinding kahirapan in the country or area of origin, di ba? Yun naman ang lagi sinasabi ng iba, mag abroad sila para umaman, para ma... Uh, makawala sa kahirapan na kinakaharap nila sa kasalukuyan, di ba? Then labor migration naman, there is a difference between ang economic migration and the labor migration. Pag sinabi naman natin labor migration, it is a term used which refers to people with Filipino citizenship who resides in another country for a restricted period of employment. So yung iba, umaalis sa specific place nila, origin ng uh, bansa, or lugar para pumunta sa ibang lugar for the purpose of employment, para lang magtrabaho, di ba? May mga taga-probinsya pumupunta rito uh, either for construction, uh, katulong, uh, cons no, construction, uh, sales ladies, and some mga professionals then galing sa probinsya dito na nagtatrabaho sa kamay nila. That is labor migration. Or yung mga Pilipino lumalabas ng bansa para magtrabaho sa ibang lugar that is still labor migration. Okay, so ano ang dahilan ng mga migration ng migration? Anong magiging uh, what triggers migration? So number 1 is poverty, of course kahirapan. And basically limited masyado yung ano to, yung opportunity sa kanila that is for number 2 unemployment na wala silang makitang trabaho doon. So mapupunta sila sa ibang lugar na sa tingin nila ay may i-offer sa kanila na trabaho. 
Next is to improve standards of living. May trabaho naman. Uh, problema is nakikita nila na hindi sapat yung kanilang kinikita. So, ibig sa, ang gagawin nila, pupunta pa sila sa ibang lugar para i-augment yung kanilang uh, financial resources. ba? Diba? And of course, number four, higher salary, uh, pupunta sa ibang lugar para uh, makahanap ng trabaho na may mas mataas na sweldo. ba? Diba? Teachers are paid uh, better in some other parts of the world. Same as nurses, caregivers, and other blue-collar jobs. Whereas, dito sa Pilipinas, mas mababa yung kanilang basic salaries. Okay? And then, of course, economics uh, security. If I'm going to be uunlad or mayaman in another place, why not choose to live in that place? Diba? So, yun yung mga dahilan ng migration. Another thing is fluctuation fluctuation rates daw fluctuation in exchange rate with regards to migration like for example i i, I mean economic activities so fluctuation exchange rate kapag daw bumababa yung halaga ng pera elsewhere in the world nagiging less ano yan nagiging less priority for investment for example like halimbawa dito sa Pilipinas from 55 halimbawa lang ha from 55 naging 45 na lang yung value of dollar. Mag-iisip ngayon yung mga investors from another country na hindi na lang muna ako papasok kasi my money is going to be less valued. Diba? Or kung bababa pa yan ng 35 and 25, it is less valued. So I am my as well look for another country na mataas ang halaga ng pera ko kasi I am going to do more, make more with my money. Diba? Another thing is oil price increase. So, nagiging dahilan din to ng ano to, uh, instability ng isang bansa, yung oil price increase. Simply because almost everything is powered, especially transportation, is powered by oil. So, ibig sabihin, there is going to be a limited mobility of people kung ang kanilang access to sa oils will become ano to um limited then diba so i'm not going to do business in that place kasi um might as uh, no 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 yung aking ano to yung aking mobility will also be uh restricted okay and then peace and order uh, sa isang bansa kasi para makapasok uh, para maingganyo pumasok ang mga investors dapat maayos yung peace and order situation, di ba? So kung paglabas mo pa lang ng ano to, na opisina mo, may humahaging na sa'yo ng mga bala, hindi ako pupunta dyan kasi my life is at risk, di ba? And that is not good for doing business, di ba? Another thing, sa, in relation to migration naman, ang nangyayari dyan is because of ano to, gulo sa isang specific na lugar, ang nangyayari, some people would actually choose to leave the lugar at pumunta na lang sa iba, migrate sa ibang lugar na alam nilang mas ligtas yung kanilang buhay. Okay? Again, for questions, doon tayo sa ating GC. So, another activity, answer the following questions. Actually, I, wrote, I just wrote it here for you to have a guide kung paano sasagutin. So, why do entrepreneurs want to have a commercial space daw in the mall even if price is very expensive? Uh, actually, malls has become a marketplace. Okay, AMA has become a mar not just a recreational place, but a marketplace, especially for people who are looking for something, diba? So, it is a one-stop shop para, ano to, para doon mamili at hanapin yung mga bagay na hindi nila, uh, na kailangan pa nila puntahan from one place to another to another, and pag sa mall, nasa isang lugar na yan, diba? Actually, the mall is a combination of a... Uh, different market forms. Okay? So where do taxes go? Taxes basically goes to social services and other spending of the government that they deemed it necessary para umunlad at protektahan yung kanilang mga mamamayan. Without the taxes, the government is nothing than naman nila. So why should entrepreneur pay the employee a salary based on a minimum wage and why not <laughs> diba minimum na nga lang yan but the thing is ang uh, sinasabi natin kaya nag-aassign tayo ng minimum wage sa isang bansa is simply because 
it is computed daw it is computed daw so that uh, a person receiving a minimum wage will be able to live decently okay magiging maayos ang kanilang pamumuhay coming from the sustenance na nakukuha nila sa kanilang mga sweldo di ba kasi ang objective ng pagtatrabaho ang objective ng employment is to provide a decent life i don't know if you are if you would agree with that but basically kasi maraming nagsasabi na kulang daw yung minimum wage natin dito sa Pilipinas para mamuhay ng tama yung mga Pilipino okay so moving on effects of these issues on purchasing power migration so sa migration daw kapag napunta ka sa mas maayos na lugar basically you earn more and practically you get to have a better purchasing power sa so, unemployment naman uh, people who gets employed after a long time of unemployment did have a purchase uh, nagkakaroon sila ng purchasing power to buy things that they need for survival, di ba? And then, of course, oil price increase. The more that a price, is, uh, the oil is priced high, basically, people would tend not uh, to limit, hindi naman not to buy, kasi kailangan talagang bumili, di ba? To limit their purchase with regards to oil products. Otherwise, kasi pag mas mababa yan, then, you get to enjoy, you get to afford it. So, mas mataas yung uh, purchasing activities. Okay? Then lastly, you need to do your assignment. Everything, uh, what's in here is just for this entire week. And basically, I'm going to give you another set of modules for next week and the weeks after. So, that's it. Good day everyone. If you have questions, doon tayo sa GC natin. Mag uh, tanong, wag niyo na akong i-PM. Wag niyo na akong i-PM. Doon na tayo sa GC natin. Wag usap-usap. Okay? So if you have questions, doon tayo, uh, tayo sa GC again. Um, you, kayo, pwede na kayong kumuha ng inyong mga modules, di ba? Kasi you're more than 15. Okay? So that's it. Thank you.